It's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I'm going to plant some peas in this vegetable bed here that I mulched last fall with winter rye, what they call a green mulch, right? You plant the rye and it grows, you plant it in September and it grows and it basically slows down and kind of stops over the winter, but the winter doesn't kill it and as soon as spring comes around it starts growing again, which is what it's done, right? So now it's uh, about uh, the third week of April and it's about six inches high and uh, I don't want rye here. <laughs> right? This is supposed to be peas and potatoes. I'm going to have peas going down the middle and potatoes on the side. It's still a bit early for planting potatoes and it's a kind of iffy for planting peas but it's such a nice day and it's been so warm and the whole next week looks okay. Peas are pretty tough sometimes they can you, know, you can you can roll the dice and plant them a little bit early. As a rule of thumb you should plant peas when you see yellow dandelion flowers but you can bend the, where peas are concerned, sometimes you can bend the rules a little bit. But it's warm and it's getting warm and I just feel like planting these and I got enough that if they don't work I can plant some more. <laughs> so let's get going. So here's what it looks like. It's just a beautiful green grass, right? Anyway, I don't want this here. To my mind, the first thing that needs to be done is to just cut it all down, right? And that might seem like, I mean, I could use a weed whacker here, but it would put grass everywhere. And I kind of like, I have an, a, an, a, a strange uh, affinity for hand tools and I don't consider this to be too much work. I just do a low cutting of this. It's really not that, you know, I think, I think we'll be done this in a matter of minutes. How about I fast forward this and uh, we'll see how long it takes. So I don't know how long that took, but it felt like it took a couple minutes. Now I'm always amazed when I'll do something that takes a little bit of effort and people will comment on my video and say, that's too much work. And I'm like, that took two minutes. <laughs> that took five minutes. How is five minutes too much work? And I think that only took a couple minutes. So uh, yeah, <clears throat> of course I could have taken the weed whacker to it or I could have taken the lawnmower to it or anything like that. but. The time it took to get it out and gas it up and get it all going and all sort of stuff, I'd be done using my little, the old fashioned way, right? So this is ready to go. Now, what I need, now I could, I could scrape this off and use it as a mulch elsewhere in my garden, but I'm just gonna leave it where it is, right? The idea with a green mulch, it's not pulling nitrogen out of the air and fixing it in your soil like a clover or a legume might do. Generally speaking, Nitrogen is not stable in soil, right? Whenever you have a good rain, a lot of your nitrogen just washes away. <laughs> so the idea of using a green mulch is that the nitrogen that's in your soil in September is captured in here. It's held in here and it stays here all winter, right? And now because I've cut this and I've shredded it, and I'm gonna show you in a minute a way to sort of compost this all in. I mean, on a farm, they would just till this in with a giant machine. Um, and I guess if you were a home gardener, if you had a rototiller, you could do that. But there's a much easier way, right? But the idea is all this nitrogen that's tied up in this is just gonna break down. And by virtue of the action of the soil organisms, it's gonna go back into the soil and be available to my plants, okay? So all I'm gonna do is down the center where I want my peas to go, I'm just gonna <laughs> scrape off some of this greenery here. This is a plan I cooked up in my head last fall. The idea was that I cut a line down the center, okay? That's roughly, let's say about a foot wide. Yeah, about a foot wide. Okay, so we just cut a line down the center using a flat, flat shovel. What I'm doing is I'm cutting out the sod. That's a general idea. 
Okay, that's a good stopping point. Okay, now I can just break these into pieces so it's manageable. Now the idea is I just pry that up. The centerpiece, right? With my shovel. Pry it up. And flip it over. That's it. Just like that. That will kill the rye. Now I'm not going to bother doing this for the whole garden. Because that's it's not needed to do for the whole garden. I'll show you what I'll do for the sides. Okay? But this is what I'm going to do down the center where I want to plant my peas. Okay, so let me just finish this part off and then I'll catch up with you in a minute. Now, using the back of my rake like a hoe, I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit, break it up a little bit. All right, so the thing with the, generally speaking, as a general rule, sod will not grow if you rip it off and stick it back in upside down. It's a general rule. All right, all right, so we got our soil prepared. But we still have all this grass growing here, right? So we gotta kill the grass, because we don't need it, right? So I got all these uh, leaf bags, right? Just begging to be used. Now this is easier to do with scissors, but this worked just fine, right? There we go. Just put that there. I wonder what all this wood's doing here, right? It's to hold this down. All right, so you get the idea? We're gonna smother out the weeds with the paper, right? It's too early to plant potatoes, okay? So in about a month, I'll take this paper off and I'll plant potatoes here and I'll put mulch a good foot high over the potatoes. I don't know if the grass will be dead in a month, but because we're gonna mulch it so aggressively with leaves or whatever I can get, whatever state this sod is in when I plant the potatoes, the heavy mulch that I'm gonna put over that will should smother out the grass. You ever have a lawn and you rake up a bunch of uh, grass? Or you're just mowing your lawn with a bag on, you leave a mound of grass clippings on the lawn, it kills the grass underneath, right? So that's the idea. We're basically taking away the source of energy for this rye is the sun. We're taking all the sun away. It's got nowhere to, no way to grow other than to use up the energy in its roots to try to find sunlight but it's not gonna find it underneath this paper. It's gonna be warm enough for the plant to grow, but there's gonna be no sun. So it's just gonna use up all the energy in its roots, trying to find the sun, and then it's gonna die, and then it's gonna be broken down by soil organisms. I don't know, it's not all gonna be broken down by the time I plant my potatoes, probably not. But I'll just dig, dig in there with the potatoes, stick them in, mulch it, and you know, the plant will be so weakened that it will not be able to get through the mulch. It's from my experience that that works just fine, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna work here. So let me just continue with this brown paper bag thing and I'll catch up with you in a little bit. All right, <laughs> so I don't know how long that took, maybe 10, 15 minutes, right? But now I've got my grass killed or most of my grass killed, at least that's the plan. And I've got a nice fresh strip of soil, fertile 
good soil. You know it's fertile because look at the look at the state of the grass, the rye grass that was growing in it, right? Nice and green and lush, right? So now we've got good soil to plant our peas in. And in about a month I'll put potatoes in here and they'll grow on either side of the pea trellis. So let's get those peas in the ground. I'm gonna have a trellis down the middle here. So I'm gonna what I like to do is have a row of peas on either side of the trellis. And I like to put a pea every couple inches along that. Okay, so the easiest way to, to gauge that is just stick something down like a like a rake rake handle, right, and plant your peas. Right, I'm just sticking them in about half an inch deep in the soil with my thumb. Okay. I've got enough peas that if this doesn't work, I can just replant. But I'm, I'm very confident <laughs> this will work out uh, just fine because this is how I normally plant my peas and this is roughly when I plant my peas. Although I've never planted them over winter rye before. Right, so that's the only experimental part here. But I'm, I'm spacing these about two inches apart. Right, and of course not every seed's viable, but usually these are uh, Vessi seeds, uh, super sugar snap climbing pea. I plant these every year because they taste great and they grow great. And I really don't, I mean, I, I like to experiment and try different things in my garden, but with, with these, I never, <laughs> I don't experiment. I just, I just use the same thing uh, because I'm so happy with them and everybody in the house likes them. And there's a fundamental difference between a snow pea and a sugar snap pea, for those of you that don't know, right? Snow pea is the flat one that you tend to get in a flat, fancy restaurant. A snap pea, sugar snap pea, is a, a sort of fat pea. And a sugar snap pea, in my opinion, is a sweeter. Also, there's a longer window of time to pick them between when they're ready to be picked and when they're too, too woody, right? If, if you wait too long to harvest a pea, some peas, they can sort of get woody and, uh, you know, uh, the pods can get thick and they're sort of uh, unpleasant to eat, I can put it that way. But with the sugar, super sugar snap pea, you've got, a, I mean, I'm, I'm talking a matter of days, right? If you've got a snow pea and it takes you, you know, you go a week too long without harvesting it, um, that can fundamentally change the uh, edibility of it. I mean, it's still edible, but it becomes less pleasant to eat, let's put it that way, right? Because it's just uh, more woody, more fibrous, I guess is another way of putting it, right? Instead of that soft, juicy, crisp, you know, texture you, you want in a pea. Okay. Now, I mean, once these are a certain height, I will apply mulch to the soil. But for this time of year, it's it's useful just to have the soil bare, so it can you know because it's a dark color, it can absorb the sunlight, right? The heat can get in the soil and help with uh, help with germination. All right. A couple more here to do, and I'll show you the next step. All right, so I got plenty of peas left. If this all fails, I can just plant another one. I got a family of four and we love peas. And I, this is a 10 by four bed, but basically I got two rows that are 10 feet long and it's gonna grow up a trellis that's about seven feet high. I find that's all the peas we want. Uh, and we, I mean, there's basically a period of the summer where we're eating peas every other day and we're also freezing and blanching and freezing them in the freezer. And I find this amount of peas, one bed is enough, right? So this is enough for either next year or a second planting if these fail. So now all I need to do, I mean, I could just smooth this over, but I got some really nice screen soil. I'm just putting this on top to smooth this area off, right? Because this uh, soil here does have a lot of the root material of the rye in it, right? So this will just, smooth it off. So I'm not really adding depth here. I'm just smoothing it out. Now all that's left to do is water it. 
So that's it. One winter rye mulched bed tilled without tilling, <laughs> right? Because the, the agricultural approach to using this is to till it in. And I thought, well, I don't have a tiller and that seems like a lot of work. Um, this seems to be easier where I just turn the sod over down the center for my peas and then smother out the remaining grass on the sides and I plant potatoes with a heavy mulch. If you've seen my videos on how I plant potatoes, I put them in about six inches deep. I'll just dig a trench with a, with a pick. It'd be really easy to do. And then you put about six to eight, to, depends on what kind of material you've got for mulch, but six to 12 inches of mulch over top of the potatoes. Right, you don't plant the potatoes till the peas are like a good couple feet high, right? And then they grow on either side. The orientation of this bed is that's south, that's north, right? So they get the morning sun and the afternoon sun. So if you don't think this is gonna work, uh, why not subscribe to my channel and follow along and you can track the progression as the season goes on. Or if you're the type that likes to take a gamble, give it a go next year, right? Um, but this is a good way to see how this works, and if it does work, then you've got a great strategy for this September, right, because it's April in, uh, April right now, this September for mulching beds. I mean, I don't know this will work in every kind of bed, but for this kind of bed where I'm only, I only have to turn over the center, right, and then I either side I'm going to plant potatoes where they're sort of a naturally, because I plant potatoes with mulch, it's a naturally naturally way of smothering out weeds. <laughs> I think I've even got video videos called how to smother out weeds with potatoes, right? So it just works. It's a good, it's a good marriage of techniques and relatively little work. I don't, I don't know how long this took me, but it wasn't that big a deal. Now my peas are planted. You know, I'm going to put more energy into building the trellis for this garden than I actually put into <laughs> dealing with all that ryegrass. So I'm happy with this. I uh, hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Check out my weekly column at MaritimeGardening.substack.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here, go to Vessies.com to buy whatever you need for your garden this year. And use my coupon code GAVS23 to get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in the order and there's no oversized items in the order. Check out the description box of this video for details. You can buy everything you need from Bessie's. They have seeds, fruit bushes and trees, soil amendments, pest solutions, tools, clothing, and lots of other stuff too. So yeah, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here and they sell something you need, buy it from them using my coupon code and happy gardening.